everybody's obsessed with this thing called money now. Everybody's stressed out. In Europe, in the mid-70s, we left. Nobody, everybody was much more relaxed. Life was still real then. You come back now, and in Australia, Europe, and other places, you find out the world has changed. The world now, there's something wrong, and it's going completely to hell and back in a bucket. <laughs> other traditions, a respect for history, a respect for other traditions, an awareness through family history of the kinds of abuses that colonial powers have put on indigenous peoples around the world, and also there's ancestors in the family who've done some rather interesting things at early times, at rather interesting areas of the world. Uh, so something I sort of grew up into uh, naturally. In 1973, when I first went to the Isle of Malakula, what was the effect on me? It was, ra it was rather interesting. I sort of felt almost as if I'd gone, arrived home. Uh, I had got in 73, 74, uh, before the churches got into the area, before the first colonial pacification patrol into the area and came across incredibly vibrant, very profound, very complex traditional societies, still functioning completely well, uh, completely self-sufficient, a, a little bit scary at first, you know, they looked to outsiders as if you weren't sort of used to that sort of stuff, to, out, to a white missionary, if I was a white missionary, uh, I would have been in clover, you know, it was looked like the the kind of thing missionaries always dream of, you know, people of dark skins with curly hair with pieces of wood through their noses and tortoise shell earrings or maybe pig's tails through their ears and things like that, you know. Missionaries love that sort of stuff. I thought it was fantastic. There are many things that I'll never forget. There are many, many hi highlights. Uh, an, an elderly chief friend piece of wood through his nose, tortoise shell earrings, and just wearing a bark belt, pig's tusks and a penis wrapper and stuff. And we spent three hours talking about the levels of truth and the relativity of truth. Now, the kind of conversation one was having with that chap was a kind of conversation that it might have been difficult to have with certain professors back at Oxford and Cambridge. And there are all sorts of things from many different cultures out there that always intrigued me and one of the things I must say is that in spite of the fact of having spent 11 years at university in England you know, and eight of those years I spent at Oxford and Cambridge which are pretty interesting tribes, pretty sophisticated cultures I think it's quite safe to say that I actually ended up learning more in Vanuatu about what is really important in life what is really important that makes one really human I learned more in Vanuatu than I did all those years in university. In a way, I suppose, <clears throat> mentally or spiritually or whatever, I've never really got back. Uh, I'm still there to a certain extent here. Some of the personal challenges here in Australia have been the fact that very often people don't seem to realize that thinking itself about profound subjects is actually a form of activity that should be respected. Uh, some of the clothes I wear uh, are maybe 30 years old. Uh, I've never learned how to drive. I don't use a mobile phone. Uh, I try and I, th I, uh, I think that <clears throat> by joining fully into a lot of these modern things it might interfere with one, one's train of thought. If you're doing something called work which gives you financial returns, 
is that worthwhile? It's not. That's a complete corruption of human life. But I find it very overbearing and I find it very doubtful in its ethics. Begging does not exist out there. Homelessness does not exist out there. Obesity in the way that you find in the modern world doesn't exist. A lot of the things in the modern world actually interfere with the way your brain works. There are too many distractions. Some people here in Australia might call it information overload today. Uh, I think that very often a lot of people today don't can't actually see the wood for the trees uh, because there's so much stuff pouring into their brains from all sorts of different types of modern technology that they really probably don't know where they're going. Bondi Beach, I never thought I'd end up here. Never liked beaches. Uh, I like the area. But one feels that in spite of the fact that one is back in the modern world, there's things that you realize are wrong. As if I'm in exile, as if I'm away from the really important things in life that one should be closer to. This is, I think, maybe something that's felt by you know, a, a, a number of people who've had the privilege coming into contact with very profound, ancient, traditional cultures. Uh, but from the point of view of Pacific Islanders, there's a certain amount of correlation there because the thing is, many of them suspect that the modern white man's world is actually coming to an end through its own mistakes. Because you've got the triple whammy of complete and utter financial chaos spurred on by greed and criminality and bad economic theory. You've got the ogre of climate change and you've got the end of the age of cheap oil all coming at around the same time. And so maybe being on the beach is possibly <laughs> the way things will end up.